The Attorney General saying at a press conference the feared morality police, who for decades have enforced a severe dress code on the women of Iran, has now been disbanded. Activists are skeptical, saying the morality police had already been forced off the streets by demonstrators. The Iranian people managed to shake the regime, and that's why they come up with the idea saying that, okay, we can think about getting rid of morality police. Is Iran really going to get rid of its morality police? Well, for anyone who's thinking about celebrating, you should probably hold on that and be skeptical. Because as we've been reporting, there have been mass protests in Iran for weeks now, following the death of 22 year old Masa Amini, young woman who died in religious police custody because she allegedly wasn't wearing her headdress correctly. She was alleged to have died of cardiac arrest when uh, there's reason to believe she was actually beaten to death when she was in custody. 22 year old healthy young woman is not gonna die from cardiac arrest. It's not natural causes that caused her to die. Now uh, the attorney, attorney general for Iran has signaled that the country's morality police, who was responsible for Masa Amini's death, um, have been disbanded. For more on that though, why don't we hear from a journalist that's been following these events closely. What happened today was not a formal declaration. Instead, the prosecutor general of Iran was attending a religious conference and he was asked at that conference, why have the morality police been shut down? And he didn't take issue with the premise of that question. Instead, he said about the morality police, the same institution that established it has now abolished it. Now, we should be really clear, the prosecutor general is not in charge of the morality police and Ali, as you know, nothing in Iran is final until Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khamenei says it is. That last part is especially true, right? The supreme leader needs to confirm that and there's been no confirmation in that regard. And Ben, you've been following this story closely as well. You are also, in my opinion, rightly skeptical of the morality police being disbanded. There are protesters who are saying that the morality police have largely disappeared from the streets over the past few months anyway. But that could be to, I don't know, maybe prevent themselves from getting harmed as mass protests are taking place in response to the morality police, who knows. But I don't believe for a second that the religious leaders in Iran are going to give up power that easily. Absolutely, this story as reported by the New York Times is totally bogus. I have a lot of friends and associates on the ground in Iran. Some of my dear friends are Persian, some of my ex-girlfriends are Persian. I've been communicating with them very frequently about this. They're sending me um, feeds from people specifically in the country on the streets. It is not true in any way. The New York Times ran this without fact checking it and ran it just from an off the cuff statement from the Attorney General, as you said, who's part of the judiciary, which has nothing to do with the authority of the morality police. Obviously, no police force or branch of the government is disbanded based on the Attorney General whimsically saying something during a speech. And even he didn't say they were abolished directly. He also wanted to say they were moved from where they started. It could be interpreted that they moved offices, they moved where they are. And part of the reason why they're not on the streets as much is yes, they've been, they've been pulled back to some degree because of the huge scale protests for months now, absolutely. But also because many of them have shifted into just being the security forces that are arresting protesters en masse. Over 18,000 people being wrongfully detained. And during the distraction of this story of the last 24 hours, what has instead happened is people have been sentenced to death. Children have been sentenced to death, people under 18 in Iran for these kind of protests. And the real reason that it seems they are doing this bogus story and the Western media is eager to run with it is because there are planned three days of nationwide strikes in Iran today, Mm. tomorrow and the day after supposed to shut down the economy. To finally Mm. show the regime, the Islamic Republic, that they will not take it anymore. And they're trying to distract the narrative. And the the purpose of these protests has never been from the very beginning to just get rid of the the compulsory hijab laws. It's to take down the regime, it is revolution, it is a change of government. And so even if they did get rid of the morality police and say you don't have to wear head coverings anymore, that would not satisfy these protesters. Exactly. 
And the other major reason to Anna that they're doing this now as well is on December 14th. If you remember, the UN Council is supposed to be deciding whether or not to keep Iran on the commission on the status of women, which how could they have ever been on in the first place? Such an oppressive misogynist regime that keeps women down at every possible chance. And so they're trying to show, oh, we're, we're reasonable. It's a lie, it's a distraction, and this will not stop the protests. And hopefully the coverage can shift to covering the protests instead of buying that this half measure said by a half person barely said is some decree by the supreme leader. They still have a supreme leader, which is ridiculous. And that person hasn't said jack about this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the only the only thing that would make it clear that the country is really shifting away from religious rule is if they did away with the kind of power that the Grand Ayatollah has, that the religious leaders have. I mean, it's it's so obvious that this is a bit of a trick to kind of appease the protesters and get them to calm down, not engage in any kind of strike that would further, you know, obviously harm Iran's economy, which isn't doing so well to begin with. And I do want to say, you know, Iranian state media is also contradicting the attorney general and his statement. One state television channel, the Arabic language Alam, said that the comments had been taken out of context. And other state channels said the government was not backing down from the mandatory hijab law. And you're so right in noting that it's not just about the morality police. It's about the way that government is structured. The insane amount of power the religious leaders have and the control they have on people's intimate lives. You know, The lack of freedom that people have to live their lives as they see fit. And also for his part, Mr. Montezari, and Montezari is the Attorney General, said on Saturday that the judiciary would still enforce restrictions on social behavior. So wait, why are we talking about this at all then? If they're still going to do what they've been doing, Simply saying, like, yeah, we've kind of maybe disbanded the morality. That's not that's not good enough. So that's exactly what a lot of people have been saying too. Is that now, when when early in these protests, they were hoping Western media would cover it. Now they're hoping we don't cover it specifically because we're so eager as a whole, as a mainstream media, to to cover that the Iranian regime that's been horrible for so long suddenly is supposed to be this great regime that has come to its senses. Here's an, a, a direct post on Twitter from somebody on the ground there too, from Masi Alinejad, who wrote, this is the real news in Iran. Amusement center in Tehran was closed yesterday after a photo of its employee without hijab went viral on social media. Tehran's prosecution has opened a case against her. So if morality police had been abolished, you'd think somebody not wearing a head covering would be just fine. So we right, need to right. be covering the story as much as we can, but covering it from a very critical angle against this repressive, terrible regime and trying to help the Persian people, the people of, of Iran achieve the change that they desperately need to be able to live in a free society finally. It's long overdue. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.